Leviathan, the mighty primordial sea serpent of biblical legend, a titanic monster that plays a role in the mythos of many cultures. This colossal beast was said to rule over all the creatures of the sea, and whilst it has many descriptions across its various appearances, all are testament to its ferocity. So, what exactly is the Leviathan? Let's find out together, right now. According to the Book of Job, Leviathan was one of the three primordial beings that held great power on the earth. Behemoth, a bull-like creature, was given dominion over the land. Ziz, a dragon-like creature, was given reign over the skies. And lastly, Leviathan was given rule over all the seas, though the Mediterranean was to be his home. The mighty Leviathan was thought to be the most powerful of these three creatures. This is possibly because of the dangers that are associated with the sea, and possibly because the Leviathan was known to be destructive in nature, whilst Behemoth and Ziz were peaceful creatures. In the beginning, there were supposedly two Leviathans, a male and a female. They were made to keep each other company in the seas. As time went on, however, it became clear that both creatures could not be allowed to survive due to fears that the Leviathans would take over and possibly devour the world if they were able to create offspring. Alternative versions suggest that it was only necessary to kill one of the Leviathans because it had been corrupted by an evil entity, causing it to lose its gentle nature and become a creature of great destructive power. To preserve the lives of his other creations, God descended to the earth to destroy the female Leviathan. There was a great struggle between God and the female Leviathan because of her great strength. However, because God was all-powerful, he was eventually able to kill the female and save the rest of his creations from destruction. The male Leviathan is bitter because of the loss of his companion and awaits the end times when he will battle with God. After killing the female Leviathan, God used the skin from her corpse to create a beautiful canopy. It was said that the Leviathan had one of the most beautiful skins of all God's creatures, making this canopy especially exquisite. Under the canopy, a feast made of the flesh from the beast lays on a table. When the righteous are taken to paradise in the rapture, they will sit down with God under this canopy and feast upon the flesh of both Leviathans and of Behemoth. God used the remaining skin of the Leviathan female to make garments of light for Adam and Eve. Although they had disobeyed the will of God by eating the forbidden fruit, God helped to ensure their protection on earth by giving them these special clothes. Many creation tales that reference the Leviathan say that God made the three primordial creatures as a way of demonstrating his mighty power. By creating the most powerful creatures on land, in the seas, and in the skies, God showed his great power, which helped to humble the rest of his creations. The Leviathan, however, posed a special sort of problem for many. It was the only one of the three creatures that was known to have a destructive nature and was largely regarded as an evil being. In addition to being extremely dangerous, the Leviathan was known to be impossible for man alone to defeat. Legend tells us that the Leviathan was at least 300 miles in length. The exact size of the creature was unknown because it was simply too vast to be comprehended by man. This mighty sea creature was known to have a hot temper that was feared by all and armoured scales that made it impossible to kill the beast. In fact, the scales of the Leviathan are said to be one of the most impressive qualities of the creature. Many creation myths claim that the Leviathan had a double layer of armoured scales that protected its flesh. These scales were layered so closely together that not even air could get through. Though these details tell us that the beast was mighty, it does not give much insight into what type of animal the Leviathan might mimic. Many theorise that the beast is likely a large serpent or dragon. Others believe that the Leviathan could be a large whale. Curiously, the Leviathan has more than just fearsome characteristics. It is also known for its strange beauty, with some suggestions it was fluorescent in nature. Its eyes are said to have a dim light that would intensify if the head of the Leviathan broke the surface of the ocean. Its skin also had a beautiful glow, especially its flippers, which have what appear to be halos floating above them. Whilst the Leviathan was not necessarily evil, it did enjoy chaos, especially among God's chosen creatures. It was said that the Leviathan could breathe fire, when the head of the creature broke the surface of the waters, flames would shoot out from its mouth and nostrils, whilst fire fired from its eyes. 
The raw heat of the Leviathan was such that it would cause the water around itself to boil. Additionally, the beast was known to have extremely foul breath. Its odour was essentially poison. Any personal creature that encountered the breath of the monster would die. There are passages in ancient texts that suggest the Leviathan would kill every living thing in paradise if allowed in, simply from the smell of its breath alone. The existence of a mighty serpent-like beast is not unique to one culture, however, and there are many parallels to creatures and tales from other theologies. In Mesopotamian and Babylonian mythology, there is a goddess called Tiamat, who is portrayed as both a mother and creator goddess, as well as a malevolent force. Tiamat rules chaos as well as the sea and other waterways. She is depicted as a giant sea creature. According to ancient texts that tell the story of Tiamat, it's clear that the pandemonium she created had to be quelled. So, Marduk, the patron god who ruled healing, justice and compassion, battled her to bring order to the world. Ultimately, Tiamat lost. When she was defeated, Marduk splits her into two pieces and from her body he created heaven and earth. Furthermore, Tiamat's eyes became the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The ancient Egyptians told stories of a snake deity named Apep. According to Egyptian legends, as the sun god Ra made his daily journey across the sky, bringing light to the world, Apep was always there, trying to impede his progress. Apep's overarching goal was to create darkness and chaos in the world. Appropriately, Apep was also referred to as the Lord of Chaos, and, befitting his nickname, he would create storms, lightning and other havocs. But just as Marduk battled Tiamat, so Ra battled his own serpent arch-enemy, Apep, to bring order to the world. In Greek mythology, the earth goddess Gaia was angry with Zeus because she felt he had treated her sons, the Titans, disrespectfully. So she joined with Tartarus, the god of the underworld, and they produced a son, the monster Typhon. Typhon was a dragon-like beast who spewed fire and smoke. In fact, he was so horrifying that the Olympian gods fled to Egypt where they were transformed into animals. It wasn't until Athena shamed Zeus and called him a coward that Zeus decided to take on the snake demon. The two engaged in a calamitous battle in which Zeus hurled thunder and lightning bolts at Typhon. However, Typhon managed to encircle Zeus with his coils and drag him to his cave on Mount Parnassus. Zeus was freed eventually, and with newfound strength and the mighty winged horse Pegasus pulling his chariot, he pursued Typhon all the way to Sicily, and there he crushed him with Mount Etna. In addition to Typhon, the Greeks told stories of other sea creatures who may have been precursors to the Leviathan. The Hydra was a nine-headed sea serpent who wreaked havoc on people and their livestock. If some hero managed to cut off one of the Hydra's heads, it would stubbornly sprout two more in its place. It wasn't until Hercules came along that the Hydra was defeated. Undoubtedly, these stories were not only precursors to the tales of the Leviathan, but they were also the blueprints for later folk tales about heroes slaying dragons. In fact, the appearance of the Leviathan or similar creatures is a common thread across almost all cultural theologies, often representing both chaos and creation, while standing as a symbol of the ultimate power of gods. The name itself today has become synonymous with any huge sea creature and can be found referenced widely across modern media, for example in popular video games such as Final Fantasy. A terrifying beast then, that has become so legendary that it now defines the very concept of a mighty sea monster and remains to this day a symbol of the limitless power of creation. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more great stories. Cheers.